Well, hello and welcome to Training Tuesday, everyone. I'm Heidi Reese with the Dayton Superior and Simons Marketing Training Department. Hanging out here with Chuck, who's going to be presenting some good information to us. But before we get to that, just want to let everyone know that those who have joined are muted. Don't let that stop you from asking any questions through the Zoom chat functionality. You can have an interactive, um, I'm looking at it all the time, so you can talk with me or you can ask questions during it and I'll get those answered for you at the very end. Or you can save them all up and we'll have about a five minute time frame at the end, hopefully, to answer those questions for you. I uh, wanted to also let you know that this is being recorded and we'll get it posted on our YouTube channels as well as DaytonSuperior.com. A uh, little plug if you want to see any of the old Training Tuesdays and where this one will be pushed as well is you just search for product videos and they will take you all there. And you'll do that search on DaytonSuperior.com. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on today. Today's training is going to be around the heavy forming and the sticks and boards methods. Uh, with us today, like I said, is Chuck. He's our national training manager, and he's been around forever. Right, Chuck? I Just feel like about. I say this all the time. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to let you know that he has been with the construction industry for over 49 years. 20 of those have been as a dealer for accessories as well as forming, and guess what, chemicals. So he's been all around with those products. 29 of those years have been with Dane Superior, which is awesome, I think. And he has worked in many areas, some of them being product manager, um, and now he is, like I said, the national training manager and works alongside me. He's the brains of the business here. So Chuck's business and civil engineering degree helps dramatically so he can contribute to all of these presentations. He knows the business inside and out, and he is here to share his knowledge. So let's get to it. Um, do you want to make the statement like we always do, or do you want me to say it about? Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, so anything you see here, we have technical data sheets, safety data sheets, all that good stuff on DaytonSuperior.com. So all the information you see in this training will be out there on Dayton Superior. All right, now thank me, Chuck, and get on going. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about sticks and boards on the heavier side of the forming systems. When we refer to this, we, we're referring to actually with the uh, systems that we're looking at. Uh, factor of safety is always uh, a consideration that we need to take into play. So typically we have with all form work accessories. As this doesn't matter if it's a snap tie to a taper tie. Uh, the strength always typically when you're seeing that you safe working load applies to a two to one safety factor on the product. Basically means it's a safety work safety uh, factor that it's associated with the product is half of the ultimate strength the ultimate strength being point of failure. So when we're talking load capacities, for lighter duty form work like your snap ties, uh, she, uh, excuse me, uh, snap ties, your, uh, uh, any of your loop ties, flat ties, et cetera, typically those are gonna have a 3,700 pound safe working load two to one or less. When we're talking heavy duty form work, which is what we're gonna talk about today, they typically are gonna be anywhere from, well, in this class here, it's gonna be like 6,000 pounds and up. Obviously, this is some of the old heavy form work. You will never see woodwork like this again on a, on a job today's market. What we're seeing today has all been replaced by uh, the job build forms, typically anything that you saw today like that isn't there anymore. Uh, ties are spaced, you know, 24 to 32 inches on center. Sticks and boards typically uh, have all been replaced with modular forms. Here we're looking at the power of red. With the power of red, you got uh, uh, Simon's form system, which is a modular form system. Uh, in this case here, uh, I'd like to say is a competitor to the sticks and board system, 
but in all reality, it is an ally of the system of the products here that are being used. Whether or not you have form systems or not in your in your marketplace or even in your inventory, uh, you will use or can use a lot of these heavier duty forming accessories with your modular forming system. So let's start out, coil ties, one of the most basic systems here, uh, basically uses a self-cleaning coil thread, uh, no chances for cross-threading. Uh, it basically is a coil with two struts in, in, uh, attached to it. Uh, biggest problem we have with this system is it's very labor intensive to put into place and it's a lot of component pieces to actually assemble on the job site. Uh, with this system here, you can also get a heavier duty struts. So you got heavier duty wire going across this, increasing the strength of the tie. Uh, you can put water seals on the struts here to make the tie a water seal tie. And obviously they have cones that can make it uh, for the setback that goes along with it. Here's a tie going in, and when you look at this tie system, you're looking at a standard uh, B1, B3 coil tie with a screw-on coil tie. This enables you to screw two plastic cones onto it to give you a definitive wall dimension. Probably one of the most uh, cost savings invention inventions on this system here was that it gives you a definitive wall, so you don't have to have a spreader in the uh, formwork. But the problem with the system is you've got a coil tie, two cones. You then have to have two coil bolts and two washers. So there's seven pieces that you actually have to have to make up a tie. Now, most of it is all reusable, but it is, and the more pieces you have, the, system typically gets more uh, cost uh, ineffectiveness uh, on the job site. I said you had to have a coil bolt. Typically our coil bolts need a standard 8307 and strength wise. Uh, they're available from half inch to inch and a half and quarter inch increments. Uh, basically about the uh, approximate strength is equal to an A235. Actually, I think that's supposed to be an A325. We have also she bolts available. Now, she bolts originated with the forming system. Uh, with inside rods, high hardware uh, can be uh, bench assembled, so you can basically make the tie up ahead of time and pass it straight through the formwork. So once the form ties are basically uh, installed, Standing upright, you can pass the tie right straight through and then attach your uh, washer your washer, and your nut on the end. System has uh, been around forever. Uh, your ties basically use an inner tie that is the only variable part of this system. So you can basically go as short as you can go, which is about four inches on the tie on the inside tie to whatever length you can get coil rod in. And the standard sheet bolts here, you see here, they come in uh, typical uh, statements here, uh, dimensions three quarter uh, on the inside tie to one inch on the outside. Uh, and there, there's a multitude of different sizes available, basically with a, a smaller inside rod and a larger outside diameter, obviously. And here you can see the, what ties. This is a chart that's actually available in our uh, handbook for the Shebo system. Shebo simply, like I said, use an inside tie system, and typically you have one a D1, which is basically just a, thread, a rod that has been threaded a couple of inches on the end so that it will thread into the uh, Shebo. You can get a D18, which is just a standard piece of coil rod, 
and so you can cut that yourself in on the job site or you can pre-order it cut to length. Uh, you can also get a uh, flat put on the tie so that basically that stops any anti, it's basically an anti-spin device so that once you go to disassemble or take the chi bolts off, you don't have to worry about the tie spinning in the concrete. Taper ties. Uh, typically, standard imperial dimension taper ties, three quarter to one in, uh, to a half inch. We have one inch, inch and three quarter, inch and a quarter to one inch, and inch and a quarter to inch and a half. Once again, a lot of component pieces because with a taper tie, you have a big end and a little end with the tie tapering in between. So what happens is you're going to have a large tie. Typically, let's say an inch and a quarter, inch and a half on one end, and on the other end, you're going to need an inch and a quarter. A lot of times, what you'll have to have is washers on this system, on the uh, ends of the ties, typically half inch, three quarter, uh, and so forth. Uh, along with, you can also get battered wash washers, which will come into play when you're talking. Uh, a battered wall or a, a sloped wall, whatever whatever considerations you have. A lot of times, battered washers are used uh, regularly with the tape, taper tie and sheet bolt system because of primarily the tie. So a lot of times, the tie holes don't match up directly across from each other. We also have heavy coil nuts to be used with this system. Uh, we're looking at half inch, three quarter, seven eighths, one inch, inch and a quarter, and inch and a half. We have a B25 on the right hand side and a B13 on the left hand side. The B13, it requires two B13s to equal the strength of one B25. So we also have a threaded cast wing nut. Uh, the cast wing nut typically is a cast product that comes in half, three quarter, seven eighth, uh, one inch, an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half diameters. Typically, is uh, it helps speed up assembly as you're moving through the system. Uh, here, okay, sorry about that. Uh, we have our Euro thread bar. Now, one of the things that is, uh, I'm going to call it a, a new product, uh, since it's not as old as I am. <laughs> uh, but the system, the system here, the Euro thread system came into the U.S. about the uh, uh, early 1990s, uh, and it came in five, two different dimensions, a 15 millimeter, which is approximately a 5 8 and a 20 millimeter, which is approximately a 7 8 uh, The standard length of the coil, the tie, or the uh, stick of rod that you can get is 19 foot 1 inches. Reason it's an oddball length is it's 5 meters. And also, 19 foot 1 inch is what fits inside a cargo container because this material typically is shipped into the U.S. So, uh, at one point, there was only about five mills across the U.S. that actually made this product. Uh, so, to, um, someone, one of them was in uh, Germany, one of them was in England, uh, one of them was in Australia, one was in China at one point. Uh, now, from what I understand, there are multiple. We've got a couple of plants uh, here on the North America side of the uh, continent uh, that actually can run this product also. Uh, typically, it is a hot forged system, so it's hot rolled, I should say. Uh, but basically, what it means, it's like a stick of rebar. It gets uh, formed in the mill and basically has the deformations put in it. It also has a flat. If you look at the drawing on here, you will see a flat on the two sides. And that comes back from the uh, Germans who actually designed this product here. They were looking at how are we going to turn this product. So this actually putting the flats on it actually enable you to put a wrench on it. 
As you can see, you get a little bit higher strength with this product, which is uh, quite a big advantage to it. Uh, and you can also get this type of product with the European thread system and what we call our DR, which is our Dayton Richmond threaded bar. This is a cold rolled system. Uh, difference between hot rolled and cold rolled. Cold rolled cannot be welded to and does not like to be bent. So you don't you may fracture it if you try to bend it. The hot rolled material does allow you allows you to weld it and to bend it. So the big savings with this product here is you're talking two and a half threads per inch. You're talking coil rod, six threads per inch. So this system here, the, just the threading of through threading a nut on the end of it is about 60% faster. With the with the cold rolled system, you also get a higher strength capacity, as shown in here. And here's your coil rod versus your DR thread. As you can see how much tighter the threads are with coil thread. And the DR thread is a much more uh, expansive thread pitch. Uh, like I said, two, about two and a half threads per inch. Accessory products that go along with it are the DR threaded bar uh, or the Euro bar. It doesn't matter each one or both. So they work with all the same products. We have a, a she nose, uh, she bolt nose piece, which actually enables you to use it like a she bolt, but then attach with a coat with a bolt from the outside of the formwork through the formwork into the uh, she bolt nose to actually make the connection. And then that piece here is stripped off. You already have your setback for your inside rod and you can strip this uh, she bolt nose and actually reuse it. Some of the quick drawings for how you would attach the system. Typically you're gonna have your, the most common method is using a solid piece of rod throughout your formwork. Taking schedule 40 PVC pipe, putting plastic cones on the end of it to actually build your own spreader and then tighten everything down. Remove the plastic cones. The PVC can then stay in the full concrete formwork. You slide the tie straight out and you can reuse it. Or you can use a taper tie. Uh, the taper tie, third one down from the top, uh, you're seeing standard, you got standard big end and a little end on the taper tie. The great thing with this system the washers and the nuts on the ends are the same size. So basically in lieu of having, and they are interconnected, uh, when you're looking at the component on the right-hand side, the one on the left-hand side is just a uh, uh, washer and a uh, nut. So there are a couple of different nuances here between the, the component pieces. As long as it has a between a euro thread and a coil thread. If it's a euro thread, you need to have a euro thread bar. If it's a standard imperial, obviously the standard imperial threaded uh, washers and nuts. So they thought about pretty much everything, how to make connections and everything. Here you see the she bolt nose being used. Uh, with a weld plate, actually working with flange, it gets welded right to your uh, sheet piling. Uh, you can actually have a, a weld angle in place here, bracket. Uh, this system here is uh, a heck of a lot faster. And it's what every system, whether it be modular or uh, you any of the forming systems that come across, so, you know, a, a sign and simply system, a uh, maxiform system now uses it. You're looking at uh, a lot of the Doka, Miva, Perry guys, they're all using this system. So if you're out on a job site looking around and the customer is asking, hey, I need ties for my system, and he didn't rent the forms from you, you have the opportunity to sell accessories to them. 
and they will match up to what they already have on site, more than likely. Tie systems that go together here, basically the through tie system, as we talked about. Typically that goes in, and you're looking at a 15 millimeter tie, which is just the most common. You have a 40,000 pound ultimate load capacity, which means you have a 20,000 pound safe working load. It's a straight piece of coil rod running through the form with a nut and a plate and, with a, plate and a washer on the end a PVC sleeve in the middle of it, which you can buy PVC product at any local uh, hardware store. Uh, the plastic PVC cones are a stock item for Dayton Superior. They actually slide into or onto the PVC pipe, giving you a setback uh, for a cone for when you pull the tie out, you remove the cones, which you can then reuse and then come back and patch everything up. The D9A taper tie, like I said before, has the same thread on both ends, which is one of key components, so you don't have to make sure you have uh, two different sized nuts and washers. Everything stays the same, either 15 millimeter or 20 millimeter, a two and a half pitch thread makes the makes it for a great product and it's 100% reusable. Now, for plugging holes, patching holes, especially in uh, water tanks, etc. Uh, if you're plugging holes in a water tank, the first thing you want to start with is you want to make sure that you put the ties in properly. If you're using a taper tie, Make sure that the big end or the big tip part of the taper is on the inside of the tank going to the small end on the outside of the tank. This way, when you put the sure plug in, which is a neoprene plug that actually you elongate or stretch it out a little bit, slide it in the hole, and then remove the setting tool. When you remove the setting tool, this thing is going to compress a little bit and actually wedge itself into the hole. By doing the big end on the inside of the water tank, the water pressure pushing outward is going to help push this neoprene plug deeper into the concrete wall because of hydrostatic pressure. What it's also going to do is then firm it up so it almost guarantees not to leak. Uh, the system has been around for uh, about 45 years, the uh, plug and setting tool, the uh, setting tool is 100% reusable. I typically, I strongly recommend using the setting tool because you don't want to take a screwdriver. I've seen everything, screwdriver, pieces of rebar where they ground off the ends and put this thing in because uh, you can tear the neoprene. So. Uh, this is the, the, the sure plug comes in various sizes depending on the whole size that you've got the plug. And that's it for today. Uh, all, these, all this information is available on www.daytonsuperior.com. You'll find tech data sheets, uh, handbooks, which actually give you all the safe working loads for all the component pieces that we discussed here today. And uh, if you have any questions moving forward, you always have training at DaytonSuperior.com or contact your sales rep. Fantastic. Thank you, Chuck. So with that, are there any questions for Chuck today on what we just went over? I'll give you a chance there to put them in if you do. I uh, want to thank you for joining us. Again, we've recorded this so you can hear it a little later on the YouTube channel or through the DaytonSuperior.com website. So while you're also putting in those questions, want to do a kind of shout out here to all the people that have been on there. Lori, thank you for coming so much. And Tracy, appreciate you too. And all of the others that have been on for the Training Tuesdays multiple, multiple times. We appreciate your support and we hope that you're learning a lot from this information. So next week, we're doing something a little different. 
We're going to be live from World of Concrete in Las Vegas. So just make a note that when you sign up for it, it will not be at 1 p.m. Eastern time like it normally is, but will be at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So what does that mean? It's 1 p.m. Las Vegas time, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain. I think I covered it. <laughs> if you're from Puerto Rico, I think you're in one of those, so we should be okay. But anyway, it's going to be pretty exciting, I think. It's, it's a little scary because you guys are going to see us in the flesh. We're going to walk around the booth, and it's a little something for everybody. We're going to have the whole World of Concrete uh, team at that time, and we're going to walk around, see some Simons, you know, forming and chemicals and infrastructure and you name it. So pretty exciting stuff there. Any questions? for today. All right. Well, since we don't, we'd also love to hear if there's anything that you want to do or see a training on, shoot us an email at trainings at or uh, I've been putting a suggestion kind of link into the emails that you're getting, letting you know to sign up or to um, that the video is ready. Please feel free to put that in there and we'll see what we can do for you. And with that, if there's no questions, Thank you, Chuck, for all your fun knowledge. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> and we'll see you guys hopefully next Tuesday. Thank you.